Hello and welcome to Romance Isn't Dead, Episode 8, A Historical Kidnapping for the Modern Age. How are we doing today, Ray? Not too bad. It's sunny. We have sun. Yay, it's a miracle. Sun. And, I have to, and I've actually turned my heating off. Yeah, uh, what is this great large ball in the sky that is emitting warmth? <laughs> I know, it's more the fact that we've actually got blue sky mm. and there are tiny little puffy clouds. How about for you? I know uh, it's really early where you are. It's early where I am, but yesterday was lovely. And um, But we're, we're in um, South Carolina. And in South Carolina in March, for most of the month, the weather goes something like this. From 10 p.m. to 8 a.m., it's winter. And then from 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. or 11 a.m., it's spring. And then 11 a.m. to, say, 3, it's summer. And then 3 to 10 is winter. So just figure out how you're going to dress, call it a day. So, yeah. Oh, I mean, not- you can't have you, they, it. Seriously, you can't have all four seasons in a day in South Carolina. It's like, here, hold my beer. Because watch this. I, that sounds kind of like our year. And is it, it oh, can't our be, year. It cannot it's, be a surprise people are sick. Yeah, it's October to June. <laughs> it's winter. Um, June to September, we have spring. <laughs> we do. Ha- we did have a really good summer last year, though, to be fair. Uh, well, I mean... <sighs> I got sunburned a lot. Yeah, I, I just... <laughs> uh. Yeah, I, the, this whole notion somehow that, that seasons, n- 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 we do it all in one day. We'll do it all in one day. And and I sent you a picture of a local lake that oh, had that. so much pollen on it. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I mean. It looked like an oil slick. Mm-hmm. Only yellow. Yeah. It was pretty, though. Mm-hmm. I know that it's not pretty for anybody who suffers from allergies, which both of us do, but it was pretty. Yeah. Well, and then there was another video. Someone took a dozer and ran into a tree just to shake the tree. The cloud of pollen that came off of that thing. And, but the thing is, I'm not, I, I was completely unsurprised because I see my car. You know, it's just ridiculous. But anyway, um, <laughs> I, I shouldn't complain about the weather. I'll stop complaining about the weather. It's fine. It's fresh- Especially as we're likely to get snow next month, as that's been the sort of pattern for the last few years. Seriously? Snow? Yeah. We had snow. Yeah, we've had snow in April. We live in Minnesota. I know. (laughs) I know we don't live in Minnesota, but we did have, we've had a couple of years, a good few years actually, where we've had snow and ice. We've had a sudden frost that's been very unexpected and really cold. Hmm. In fact, one year it got we had snow so bad, and anybody living in the UK will remember we had snow so bad that public transport stopped, and I actually was snowed in, which is a, which is horrible. <laughs> that sounds terrible. Um, well, we had a late frost one year, and I don't think it was April, but it might have been. It killed. Okay, so. For anyone who knows anything or doesn't know anything about the United States, um, Georgia is called the Peach State, which is our neighboring state. But South Carolina has more peaches. Like, we grow more peaches than the Peach State. <laughs> and so South Carolina is actually the Peach State. But um, our nickname is the Palmetto State because Revolutionary War history. And um, anyway, moving along. <laughs> Sudden cold snap, like just overnight, Bam. Dip, temperatures dipped down well below freezing. It killed 75% of the peach crop. And that was two years ago. 75%. That's not good. Yeah. I mean, I like peaches. Yeah. I mean, but the our agriculture just, I mean, it was awful. Awful. How many peaches it took out. So, um, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> it is I what mean, it everybody, is. Everybody has heard the phrase Georgia peach. Mm-hmm. And isn't the logo for any movie that's made in Georgia so a Marvel peach. Peach will notice this. Yeah. It's a peach. Yeah, it's a peach. But we grow more peaches than Georgia. So, yeah. And South Carolina. But anything made in South Carolina 
or or a South Carolina reference will have the Palmetto tree or Palmetto tree and the crescent moon. Cause that's, no, it doesn't. That's the thing. South Carolina peach doesn't quite flow the same. No, 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 no. It, but it, you just become, you know, a Carolina girl. And then the, then that begs the question of North Carolina or South Carolina. And I'm like, oh, really? You have to ask? But, <laughs> that's, that doesn't sound at all resentful. <laughs> Oh, bless, 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 bless. Okay, so let's talk romance novels. Today was my pick. Um, Are we ready for this? We are. Go for it. Okay, so this is um, Julie Quinn's latest called The Other Miss Bridgerton. And it is, uh, obviously, we do spoilers here. Um, (laughs) It is... uh, it's a Rokesby. It's a Rokesby. Yeah, it's a Rokesby. And the the hero is a Rokesby. His name is Andrew Rokesby. And he seems very attractive. Um, and uh, basically, Miss Bridgerton is a connection to the mainline Bridgertons that you get to know in later books. And, or in earlier books, but in earlier. These, these, this is a Bridgerton prequel. And um, it's essentially a pirate kidnapping, but not really, not really like Mallory kidnapping or anything like that. It's not. Um, That's still one of my favorites. It's not. <laughs> it's definitely not a bodice ripper. I would not call this no, novel a bodice even ripper. The ca- even the covers make it very, very clear. If you look at the original cover that is on the Kindle novel, especially, well, over here anyway, it's um, a, almost a Regency style line drawing, though this is, we have to say, this isn't quite Regency. Mm-mm, mm-mm. It's, it's set in 1796. So it's post American Civil or American Revolution. I don't know what the Brits call that. What do the Brits call that when the Americans revolted and, and successfully defeated the British Empire? Um, well, that's the point where America and exits our history. <laughs> <laughs> so y'all just pretend it didn't really matter. It didn't have it. Okay, just check it. <laughs> what do they call it? it? Was, well, it was Mad King George, so it was the Georgian era. Yeah. yeah. It would have been the Georgian era. Yeah, it's the Georgian. The first, well, yeah, Georgian. So it was pre-Regency. It was Georgian, as in Mad King George. Um, and... Though I don't think he was really legitimately mad. Didn't he have syphilis or something? I can't well, remember. Still, well, syphilis will eat your brain, so that makes yeah. you crazy. So, yeah. He might Not have had me. dementia. I don't know. But anyway, it was in that era. And mm. we kind of, in my history classes at least, which were in the 80s, um, that was the point where America exited British history. So it just <laughs> and said... And they mentioned. How, how did it... But I'm just wondering how that was addressed. It was just like, oh, well, the American colonies revolted, and so they became no, their we, own country? We mentioned the Boston Tea Party. Uh-huh. And I cannot remember what they talked about. I mean, got to remember it was 30 years ago. Um, they mentioned the Boston Tea Party. What about the Boston and... Massacre? Do you even no. know what that is? No. You don't know what the Boston Massacre is? But that sounds so lacking intelligence. But at the same time, um, we have a lot of um, history here. So we focused on, in in our history classes, it was very much um, the Tudors, the Napoleonic War. um, Then we discuss uh, the War of the Roses and the... Romans with Hadrian's Wall. Oh, dear Lord, this sounds really boring. Um, And then... You said it, I did not. I know. (laughs) And then we go on to the World Wars. And that is pretty much it. Okay. Well, I mean, I just... I guess it makes sense that y'all would not have any sort of, like, real discussion of, like, why the colonies decided that they didn't want to be a part, or at least that set of colonies didn't want to be a part. But at the same time, it's not like, because it's so integral to my history, right? American history, that it's just sort of startling for me any time that I, someone just sort of blows by it. I'm like, wait, wait, what? Hold on. What do you mean you don't know what the Boston Massacre is? 
Yeah, but I get I get it because it's not but then I, like, it's, yeah. There's plenty it's of stuff, history. Yeah, and and I'm an American, as so there's plenty of stuff in your history. I'm using air quotes there. Exactly. Your history that I don't know, remember, get I was say, because I'm his, an Americanist. Your, yeah, your history wouldn't be um, the Elizabethans, the Tudors, um, our Regency period. So um, the social the society aspect of our regency period wouldn't be relevant to you because your his that's when your country history really really sets off and oh my gosh is it boring but anyway all right let's move on <laughs> um let's move on back to back to our hero and heroine yeah um, heroine, her heroine. name is poppy which is sort of fun but i wanted it to be her uh, I wanted it to be a nickname, not a... Yeah, I wanted her to be something like Georgiana. Yeah, I wanted it to not be her real name, but it actually was her real name. And um, Julia Quinn, of course, made use of the tropes that, that I love, right? Um, she's been yep. compromised, so they have to get married. But she, she subverted that in a lot of ways, right? She did. Oh, she yeah, subverted definitely. that. And... Um, the only, there's only one bed that was throughout the the thing where they had to find a way around that. What else? Um, um, trying the to helpless, think. the uh, innocent heroine. But you know what? The other thing is, it's like Julia Quinn used this novel, which should have been a novella, but that's another discussion for just a minute from now. It's like she used this novel to subvert all the tropes to... yeah instead of just using one of them mm-hmm. like the single bed where right it happened one night almost there's just one bed um and he gives her the bed mm-hmm. and she takes it mm-hmm. she doesn't say oh let's share it or there's plenty of room for you which you'd get in so many other novels mm-hmm. and especially fanfics you'd get the oh i'm sure that i can trust you you can share this bed with me she just takes the bed yeah she does <laughs> and you know she's pretty ticked off you can't blame her um she's still pretty flighty but she's very intelligent like that's how like it's like she's so smart that other people can't keep up with her kind of smart. Yeah. But, the but at same the same time, kind of a dingbat. That's one of the things I noticed. I went on from reading this book to reading a few of the others. And mm. one of the things I noticed is it's almost all maths. Mm-hmm. Architecture, mathematics, it's almost all maths. And then you've got the girls who are art literature oh following through on that stereotype of uh girls girl with the being... right brain or left right 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 brain left brain girls are good at the art stuff guys are good at the um stem stuff yep got yeah it. exactly i mean he's got skill in i believe architecture yeah he sh- he's a pirate that should have been an architect is what sh- the author says yeah That's exactly. pa- that was poppy's internal monologue she should he should have been an architect not a not a, not a pirate. pirate, but he wasn't really because this is not you know, he wasn't really a pirate. So. No, he was a he was a younger son of a noble mm-hmm. who actually knew her family, and I mean it really does cover all the tropes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's fine. It's totally fine. That's what you. And um, one of the things that Ray and I had discussed sort of before we started talking, I really did feel like this should have been a novella. Like, it was very slow to get started, and then um, you're halfway through before there's even the slightest whisper of a kiss, right? Or of attraction, Mm -hmm. or any notion of feelings. You're literally, it's actually dead on, according to my Kindle, 50% through. There is a peck on the lips, literal peck, nothing but a brief brush of lips against lips right and they and they describe it as this small kiss instantaneous like real not in, but it was like a, an instant is how they sort of describe yeah. it yeah and then let me also say this about this uh, particular book one of the things i did they did spend the first 50 percent of the book getting to know one another yeah that is true which is not something you normally see in romance. Normally, romance novels have at least some elephant, el- elephant, element. Element. <laughs> An elephant? Are you I talking can talk. about Dumbo? <laughs> I can talk. 
Um, I have kids. I might be forced. No, let's not talk about that. Um, so normally romance novels have some element of, of, um, instantaneous, like, oh, get to, yeah, you, you, they have whiskey. Yeah. There's a whiskey. Yeah. But, but the first 25% of the book, you, you can guarantee, you can almost guarantee there's going to be a kiss within the first 25% of the book. And, yeah. and this just didn't happen, you know, <laughs> just didn't happen. But there were some funny moments and they really did get to know one another. And I did like that, but it didn't make for real scintillating reading. The other thing is it is happening in a very compressed time frame, but it felt like a long time. Oh God. Yeah, it really did that. The first 50 actually I'd say 80% of the novel is supposed to take place in the space of four days Mm -hmm. and the way it read I know that it was for me it felt like it lasted about a year it was so slow it felt like they'd been on at sea for at least a month and a half yeah yeah if not longer and there was no you got a lot of her in a monologue Mm -hmm. a lot lot of of internal monologue yeah yeah and a lot of her perspective and things. And he and he had that whole internal monologue thing going on too. So and it's fine. It's it's fine. It's fine. But as you said, it was they could have cut out probably thirty percent of the opening of the book and made it a novella mm-hmm. without any issue at all. Mm-hmm. And it would have been a more scintillating read. Mm-hmm. Yep, and it would have been, yeah, it would have been, it would have been. I just, I, I, I had a real hard time with, uh, I don't, know, I, I had a really hard time with like getting, getting to fifty percent of the book. It took me a long time to get to fifty percent of the book because I kept on putting it down, and then not particularly wanting to pick it back up. But being like, okay. Yeah. And the other thing is, if we hadn't been doing this podcast, I don't know that I would have picked it back up. <laughs> I might have just not. Yeah, or I would have I mean, picked it up six months from now when I was absolutely bored out of my mind. I'm like, oh, I guess I could finish this. Um, Because I do like to finish things, but I'm not one of these people who's compulsive that I have to finish. So... You know. I used to, Yeah, I used to be a... I have... To, I have to finish this person Mm -hmm. Um, and I think I turned 40 and all of a sudden it was like you know what if I don't want to watch this or I don't want to read this I'm not going to life is too short and Mm -hmm. I have actually put down books before now I've borrowed from the library or I've borrowed from a friend I have picked up a book read the first three chapters of it and gone nah can't be bothered with this and put Mm -hmm. it down and never picked it up again and I've done the same with films I've Mm -hmm. started watching a film and thought to myself, is this actually going to move on any further? No, I don't like these characters enough and just switch it off. Mm -hmm. My Netflix list is full of films that I've done that with. Yeah. So I'm not sure, like I said, I'm not sure I would have actually finished this book if I hadn't been doing it for the podcast, especially if it had, especially because it was my pick. Um, (laughs) But um, you've been better off picking the Duke and I, right? But I was trying to pick something. Well, I my we wanted was, to pick something new. I wanted something new, and she to me was a known quantity. And I was like, oh, it won't be too bad, you know. And it wasn't that it was bad. I don't think it was bad. I just think it was. It, it just felt like it should have been a novella. And somebody told her, oh, we need you to write a novel instead. So she stacked in some filler that that admittedly lets you get to know the people better but in the end it felt kind of superfluous yes i mean they have an entire conversation about building houses of cards Mm -hmm. oh and when he gets all enraptured describing the architecture of lisbon i i i'll be honest i skimmed (gasps) oh my god you did that no i have to admit like I, i i and, and see, here's the thing. I got to once I was at 44% when I picked the book up yesterday to finish it. That tells you something. And it was last night when I picked it up to finish it. And I went from 44% to 100% last night. Um, but the last 50% wasn't 
as difficult to read. Like I could get through it much more quickly. Um, it's because things were happening. Things were happening. I mean, she just wasn't this mental. And, and thank God that they didn't do this whole big thing about her journey back to England. I'd have, oh I'd, my have, God. I'd have stabbed myself in the neck with a pencil. I just couldn't. <laughs> Sorry, that's so funny. I actually read this at work and I think halfway through the week I sent a message to Sally saying, oh my God, this literally went from zero to 900 in the space of 20 pages. Mm -hmm. Because all of a sudden they are getting incredibly intimate. Mm -hmm. They get, that's the thing, this is a kidnapping within a kidnapping. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly, exactly. (laughs) Because she gets kidnapped by the pirates because she sees something that she shouldn't. Mm -hmm. They have to take her with them because... uh, He has to leave. Massive spoiler, he's a spy for the crown. Or at least a courier, right? He's a courier. Yeah. It has to take something to Portugal, so she has no choice but to go with them. She's bundled onto this ship in a burlap sack and then they spend what feels like an eternity getting to know each other on the journey out there sharing one tiny yeah. little kiss the, the, oh my god that was so long i didn't oh care about it was like the of- first two days of it were really really long yeah Ugh. and then all of a sudden they get to lisbon she's admiring someone and imagining she's admiring this fisherman or something he's a stevedore basically he's he's a stevedore he's unloading things in the dock (laughs) yeah and she's admiring his form as he takes his shirt off so she's perving basically um over this guy that she sees that she doesn't know and imagining his life so she's a people watcher which Mm. a lot of people can sympathize with i'm one myself i sit in coffee shops and do it all the time and then and and he took his shirt off in public to be fair i mean yeah (laughs) To be fair. It was hot. It was yeah. hot. Yeah. Um, she is then escorted around Lisbon by the captain who has taken sympathy on her, but also at the same time he wants to be with her alone because he finds her enchanting. So there's no um, chaperone or anything, which mm-hmm. there should be given he knows who she is and the fact that she is innocent. You know, I can't decide. He's already compromised her anyway. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm wondering if he had... And see, we don't really get him saying... Like, he... We got the part where he said, you know, I'll, I, I guess I could marry her if I had to, you know, like at the beginning of it. Mm. But he doesn't ever really visit that, revisit that in his head. Like he never, it doesn't feel like he makes that determination that he's going to marry her until much later. No. Um, and then they get kidnapped again. Yeah. By these, um, I suppose. Someone they're... with actual nefarious intentions. It's, oh, yeah. it's a street gang that is... Uh, sort of run by a larger syndicate and it's not a political motivation, but it was basically it's, it's kidnapping for ransom as a business. And if, um, if you know anything about diplomatic stuff, um, a friend of mine, her husband worked for the American government and he was an envoy to Ecuador and so he, they went down there as newlyweds, and they lived in Ecuador. And um, one of the things that happened with her, she had to have kidnap and ransom insurance. Because it's a business to kidnap Americans mm. and extort money. And normally you don't get hurt, but you get kidnapped and if you don't pay it. So you get kidnapped and ransom insurance, so there will be someone to pay the $2 million that you might be worth. Um, yeah, so it's that kind of thing where they're, they're looking for money and they, um, they, and they get, they get it from the British consul, but they get kidnapped. They get Mm -hmm. shoved into a room together. Another, there's just, and then he totally compromises her there. If he hadn't compromised her before, oh boy, did he do that then? And this was the point where I, I was reading this at work and my, Oh my God, my face when, and I'm not normally easily embarrassed, but I think because the story had been so tamed. Yeah. Yeah. It had been, it had been, my eight year old nephew could have picked this book up and read it and I wouldn't have felt uncomfortable with him. Well, I would have because my eight year old nephew, but at the same time, I wouldn't have felt that he was reading anything that was going to expose him to something unnecessary. 
until I reach the point where they have a um, an interlude on the one bed in their kidnap chamber. Okay, now, and let's be fair. Poppy is a full participant in this. Oh, there's yes, there's no question. And that is another thing that, that you brought up. There's yeah. no question of consent in this novel. Like, but she is. Yeah, he asks... He like double checks, <laughs> um, yeah. and triple check. <laughs> yeah, and then and then with this interlude, sort of the same thing. I mean, this this novel really goes out of its way to make you very comfortable with with any sort of um, physical interaction between these two. And I think I think Ray, you're right that 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 it was in part because he had kidnapped her. So he's in this position of power. Right. And so, mm. but this novel really kind of, and it feels the first time it happens, you know what? It does feel organic, but I feel like she shoehorned it in at the same time. Does that make sense? Yeah, like, it totally makes sense. It, it, I mean, it's, it goes back to what I was saying, which was, this was a romance that was written with modern sensibilities in mind. Mm -hmm. Because had this been something that legitimately happened in the Regency or the pre-Regency period, women were chattel. They were belongings. And he'd already said, you're mine. He'd staked his ownership claim on her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And... He was protecting her, but at the same time, he was the one that should have been, he was protecting her from. And if this had been a novel, say, for example, um, Gentle Rogue, which we will be coming to at a later date by Joanna Lindsay, which was written in the 80s, Ooh. there would have been no request of consent because it didn't happen. There mm. was no, I mean, there were certain in public, they'd be all gentlemanly. But if you exposed yourself not ex that sounds really wrong but if you were in a situation where you were on your own with somebody that was your consent yeah whether you meant for it to be or not <laughs> exactly you'd you'd already placed yeah. yourself in a situation where by being alone with them you had a compromised yourself anyway because without a chaperone if you were a young single woman and you were on your own with a man yeah. you were already compromised and let me let me also say this I think that there is a place for that, right? I just don't, but this, this particular one, it really felt like she wrote it to not have people complain that there was no consent. Like yeah. it was like, well, this is the most recent one. It only came out in November yeah, last year, November last year. And, and, and none of her books to me had issues with consent in them. And I've read several of her books before. Yeah, and I've just finished. Um, I've just finished the third book in the Bridgerton series, mm -hmm. and there doesn't appear to be the same request for consent. Right, but it's in still, those books. To me, it still seems very clear in those books that what happens is consensual. Oh yeah, definitely. Everything that's happening in those books is consensual, um, and and this book just seems to make it so explicit and and at a certain point almost on the nose too on the nose yeah it's kind of like going and... into a, it's kind of like going into a bar and a man saying oh can I buy you a drink no really are you saying yes I can buy you a drink mm -hmm. are you sure There's no need yeah are you sure are you really sure so what would you like are you sure that's what you want Mm -hmm. that's what it felt like in some ways to me. But I don't know if it's because of a, it's a generational thing. I think it is. And I think maybe we're being a little too hard on Julia Quinn. <laughs> <laughs> um, but at the same time, because, we've already been quite hard on her in this book because we have both stated we felt it was too long. Yeah. But, but you see what I'm saying there? I feel like I understand what she was doing. I do. I get it. Yeah. I just look at it and I'm like, um, and I think it's a generational thing because you and I are quite used to reading consent into what we're reading. So we, we, I think we have a different handle on what consent is as opposed to different generations. And that doesn't necessarily mean that we're right or wrong, right? I mean, I mean, it's the thing, we're still of the generation where no means no. Yeah. 
I but, mean, that was dropped. But we're I also the generation. You, that's into me. Yeah, no means no, but we're also the generation of you're expected to say no. Mm. Like, it, if you don't say no, then you are implying that it's yes. It's kind of like GDPR. <laughs> Do what? It's kind of like GDPR, which is our um, um, uh, basically our consent for our details to be stored and shared uh-huh. when we sign up to a mailing list. Uh-huh. If you don't say yes, you're saying no. Mm-hmm. See, <laughs> it used to be if you don't say no, you're saying yes. It's and- now if you don't say yes, you're saying no. Right. And see that with our with our generation, for good or bad, at least me growing up, the expectation was if I didn't clearly articulate the negative, then there was it was a positive. It was a positive. And so you're expected to to articulate. And now that that expectation has shifted where if you don't clearly articulate the yes, then the then the default should be no. So there is no more heat of the moment. And, and that said, I don't think we're here to determine which is right or wrong. I think, I think we would both say, especially in real life situations, consent is absolutely necessary. Oh yeah. It's just that, it's just in this book, it just feels, I think to our minds, I think, again, it might be a generational thing to our minds. It just feels really like hammered in and almost unnecessarily hammered in. Um, but you know, it's not bad. It's not bad. I don't, I don't, I mean, I'm not mad at it. I just, no, you know. it didn't, it didn't pull you out of the novel because in a way she did it well. Yeah. In a way, both of us had already kind of detached ourselves because it had taken so long to even get to a peck on the lips mm-hmm. that the romance element of it didn't feel quite so organic anyway. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. because it had taken so long. I mean, that first 50% of the book, I read it on Kindle, so I have no idea how many pages it actually is. Mm-hmm. But in that first 50% of the book, I have to admit, I put down the book so many times. It, in fact, it took me until the Monday just gone to pick the book up again after mm-hmm. reading maybe 15 pages the first time round because nothing was happening. I felt that there was so much nothing going on in the first half of the book. That I mean, they're the just getting half, to know each other and there's some fun the, things in there. But but the second half had to be sped up and condensed so much mm-hmm. because of the first half of the book. True. True. But I think she wanted to do that because she wanted us to get to know these two characters. I think. I don't know. I guess. Yeah, but then, I don't know. I didn't... I don't feel like especially at the end oh my at the end of the book where there's literally 20 pages between them meeting each other again and getting married well and then there's the epilogue <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> when she's had a baby yeah yeah all in all if if you all right so I would say all in all, this novel, if you are going to read Julia Quinn, I don't think I'd start here. Um, I wouldn't either. I don't think I'd start here. I I think I would probably start with one of the mainline Bridgerton books, and I can't tell you which one off the top of my head, but I would start with one of the mainline Bridgerton books. Um, The first book in the series is called To the The Duke and I. The Duke and I, yes. So maybe that one. Um, I think my favorite was The Viscount Who Loves Me, but I can't swear to that. That's the one with Benedict. Yeah. I can't no, remember. No, it's name. Anthony, isn't it? The heir. Oh yes, the heir, Anthony and Kate. Yeah. So anyway, th- that's just me. Um, that's just me. My thought process there. But you see, this was the first book by Julia Quinn I had ever read, and I think had I not known that. Had I not done my research and looked at the other books on Amazon and also spoken with Sally about them, I think I probably wouldn't have picked up another one mm-hmm. because it was so slow. If Really, I agree. If you are looking to start a new series of books or look at a new author, Julia Quinn, great writer, but do not start with the other Miss Bridgerton because yeah. it is so slow yeah. that you will wonder why you've picked it up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that just makes me a little sad. Like, but yeah, not every book can make, be the book, right? 
Yeah, it always makes me sad when I pick up a new author and I don't find engagement with the characters that they've created. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No fun. No fun at all. All right. Well, um, do we have anything else we need to say about the other Miss Bridgerton? Chili rating. Chili rating. Oh, chili rating. (laughs) Um, Your idea. Sorry. My bad. Um... (laughs) This one for me, I mean, I, your blush at work notwithstanding, I'm calling it a four. You see, I'd say four and a half to five, okay. but only because I was blushing at work. So if we say four, I'd go. I can go with that because I mean, for I can the go first, with five too, but I, I could go. With, I could go with four time, or five. But at the same time, we've got that whole. It took fifty percent of the book to even get a peck on the cheek. Well, a peck on the lips. So if we were rating it for the second half of the book, I'd say a six. Yeah, I'd say a six with no problem. But if we're rating it for the entire book, I'd I'd go with a four because there's way too much exposition. (laughs) Way too much. And you're an exposition kind of writer, so that probably drives you crazy. (laughs) For you to say, there's too much exposition. Holy crap. Too much. I love. I love narrative. As a writer, I love narrative. I'm not, I I struggle with conversation. Mm-hmm. I struggle really bad. Well, obviously not in person, um, as you can tell, but I struggle with writing conversation and mm-hmm. making it sound natural. Mm-hmm. So I write a lot of narrative and I love my descriptive. So I could quite easily sit and describe the blue sky outside for about 20 minutes with no problem. However, when it comes to reading a romance novel, I hate it. Mm-hmm. I want the action. I want the two characters to meet. I want them to get to know each other a little bit. I want the down and dirty in the bed that they've mm-hmm. got to share because there is no other bed. But that's just how I like to read it. At the end, when it's raining outside. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love that. I love that aspect of romance novels. And that's what I was hoping for with this one. And I didn't get it. So I go with a four. Okay. All right. I said four mostly because it's very, very tame until it's not. And then it's only not tame twice. Yeah, but the second time is so glossed over. Yeah, but that's it's what I'm almost saying. like in the second the second time it happens is in the twenty pages at the end after they've mm-hmm. reunited mm-hmm. at a family dinner of all things. Mm-hmm. And it's almost like fade to black. Mm-hmm. Which is so disappointing, especially if you've read any of her other books. (laughs) Yeah, we won't get into that one. (laughs) No, well, I'm I'm not saying that as a specific, but more as like, it's a more, it's a very YA kind of thing. That second scene is is. more YA is all I'm saying. Yeah. Although it's a little hot for YA, but it's still kind of YA. So anyway. All right. Well, if that's what we have to say, then that's what we have to say. What's our next book? Our next book is my choice, and it is one of my all-time favourites. It is romance, but it's not a romance in the traditional sense that we have been reading thus far. It is what us over here in the UK would class as chick lit, and it's by one of my favourite authors of that genre. It is To the Moon and Back by Jill Mansell. Um, It is, I love this story. It is get your tissues out if you're reading it not for any other reason than it will make you cry no <laughs> but it's beautiful at the same time it's um a story of love lost and found oh, no. and it is, it is honestly it is beautiful and if you haven't read it or you haven't ever come across her work before this is a really good jumping point it's one of the first and only books i think my niece has ever read all the way through because she's not a big reading fan and she loved it Okay. Okay. Honestly, it's not bad. It's it's a beautiful story and I really enjoy it. So I hope everybody else does too. Okay. I will read it. You slogged through this one with me. <laughs> yeah, but so did you. <laughs> <sighs> to be fair, I did not know what I was getting myself in for. I was trying yeah. I was trying to be like, okay, well let's read a book that neither of us has ever read before. And is not <laughs> it, okay. Well to be fair. Yeah. So and it it wasn't terrible. All right, so I think we're done for the day then. We are indeed. All right, great. Uh, Thanks for tuning in. And um, Rachel, is there anything you'd like to say? Uh, I would love to say keep on searching for your happily ever after. 
Indeed, and I would remind you that romance is not dead. It is alive and well on our bookshelves. Bye, y'all. Bye.